Hi everyone, this is Mr. Cervone. Welcome to my math channel. Today we will be looking at conjunction and disjunction within logic. So here's the do now. What is the solution set for the following open statements? Number one, this is a suit in a standard deck of playing cards. Secondly, this is a borough of New York City. And thirdly, x is an integer and zero is less than x, less than four. So at this point, if you would like to pause the video and try this out, then please do so. So for each of these answers, we want to represent the solution set as brackets. For example, for number one, we have clubs, hearts, spades, and diamonds. Or you can use the symbols for clubs hearts, spades, and diamonds as shown. Okay, so what about the second problem? This is a borough of New York City. What is the solution set for this one? So here the solution set is actually all the five boroughs, namely Queens, Manhattan, Brooklyn, Bronx, and Staten Island. Now the final question is actually interesting and will actually introduce the concept in today's lesson. So here we have that x is an integer and also that x is between 0 and 4, not including 0 and 4. So what are all the possible integers here? Well, the possible integers have to be 1, 2, and 3, as shown here in the solution set. Now, what is different in the third problem with respect to problem one and two? Well, the difference here is that we have an end. So let me highlight that one. Now, it turns out that this is a very important logic operation. And that operation is called conjunction. So let me introduce you to the definition of a conjunction. In logic, a conjunction is a compound sentence formed by using the word and to combine two simple sentences. Now, in mathematics, we don't like to write too much, so we just use symbols. So the symbol for and is this caret sign over here, okay? So let's look at an example now. Here we have the statement, a dog is an animal and the sparrow is a bird. So how can we combine these statements with the end symbol? Simply by letting P be the statement, a dog is an animal, and Q, let that be the statement, a sparrow is a bird. So therefore, if we symbolically write P and Q, that means that a dog is an animal and a sparrow is a bird. Now, what we want to do here is to come up with a truth table, as we did in the previous lesson for the negation. But now we want to generate a truth table for conjunctions. So we want to look at different combination, okay? Uh, what I'm trying to say here is we want to negate either the P, either the Q, or both of them and see what the outcome is, if it's true or false. So let's organize everything in a table. So let's take the first statement. A dog is an animal and a sparrow is a bird, symbolically written as P and Q. Do you agree with that statement? The answer is yes. Therefore, the truth value is true. Now, in the second statement, what we want to do is negate just the Q part and say, okay, a dog is an animal and the sparrow is not a bird. Do you agree with the entirety of the entire statement? Well, even though it's true that a dog is an animal, it is not true that a sparrow is a bird, right? So as an and statement or as a conjunction together, that statement is false. So let's see what happens if you negate the P but not the Q. A dog is not an animal and a sparrow is a bird. As in the previous case, the entirety of the statement is false. 
what if both of these are false? What if P is false and Q is false? Basically, what happens if we negate both of these? The statement would be, a dog is not an animal and a sparrow is not a bird. Is the entire statement true or false? Well, obviously, in this case, the statement is false. So this is basically the truth table for conjunctions. So let's summarize this. So the truth table is as follows. As a header, we put P and Q, and then we put P and Q. So if both of these are true, as shown in the first row, then P and Q is true. If one of them is false or both of them are false, then the statements are false. So here's the summary for conjunction, something to remember. In a conjunction, if at least one conjunct is false, then the conjunction or the entire statement is false. Okay, by conjunct, we mean either the P or the Q. So let's look at another example now, leading to a, another type of logic operation. So the statement is Andy rides his bicycle to school or Andy walks to school. Notice here that we don't have an end statement anymore, but it's an or statement. So here uh, we have the statement P, which means Andy rides his bicycle to school. Then Q, we have Andy walks to school. And now if we combine both of these, we have to use another symbol, a special symbol, which kind of looks like a V, okay? So basically that is called this junction in logic. In logic, a disjunction is a compound sentence formed by combining two simple statements using the word or. Now the symbol for or is this symbol here that looks kind of like an upside down carrot or a V, okay? So as we did with conjunctions, let's now develop the truth table. We want to decide or we want to figure out okay, which values are true and which values are false, okay? Depending on the various P and Q values. So let's get started with this example. So the first statement states, Andy rides his bicycle to school or Andy walks to school, okay? So let's assume that this first premise is true, okay? Now, if you look at the second statement, we have P or not Q. First of all, how would you write that statement? Well, here we just say Andy rides his bicycle to school or Andy doesn't walk to school, right? Now, is the entire statement true or false based on the first statement that is true? Well, here we can say that it's actually still true, right? Let's say that uh, you know, he decides to bike to school, then the second statement does not matter anymore because it's an or statement. Now, the third statement says Andy does not ride his bicycle to school or Andy walks to school. And again, is the statement true or false? Well, similar to the second statement, that statement is also true. And in a bit, I will show the true and false statements in this table, okay? What about the last one? Well, the last one states that Andy does not ride his bicycle to school or Andy does not walk to school. Now, is that statement true or false compared to the first statement? We know the first statement has to be true, but what about the last one? If you say both of them are not true, well, then the entire statement needs to be false, right? Here's the summary. It says that we have true, 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 and false, okay? So that brings me to the truth table for these junctions now. So there it is. So the truth table states that if both P and Q are true, or even one of them is false, then the disjunction or the or statement is true. Uh, but if both of them are false, then the entire disjunction is false. So how could we summarize disjunctions so that we can remember this? And here's the summary. A disjunction is false 
only if both disjuncts are false. Okay, so otherwise it's always going to be true. So here's a summary of today's lesson. In today's lesson, we learned about conjunction, which is the end for the statement using the caret symbol. And we learned about disjunctions, which uses or for the statement, which is this upside down caret or the V symbol, okay? Uh, please also remember that in a conjunction, if at least one conjunct is false, then the conjunction or the entire statement is false. And a disjunction is false only if both disjuncts are false. So this is basically the most important part of today's lesson, okay? Uh, so at this point, if you have any questions or would like to leave a comment in the YouTube video, please do so. Please don't forget to subscribe and click like. Otherwise, have a wonderful day.